you know, do you think that Ron DeSantis is, is a bought and paid for politician? Meaning that there's a lot of things that he say and a lot of things that he does that makes him an incredible governor in, in Florida, at least from the from the regular person's point of view. There may be some nuances in, in between that we may not know about. But do you think that he is a formidable candidate? Because right now, I think it's only you three. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be honest. Nobody else have a chance. I mean, most of them are wet napkins. They, 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 they're not they don't have any gravitas. So out of, you know, we've already talked about Trump a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, DeSantis. I mean, do sure. you think that he's a formidable opponent or do you think he is probably or, or somewhat been bought and paid for as a candidate for people to oppose Trump? I think pretty soon it's going to be down to me and Trump in this election. I think that's going to be the relevant choice that we face. I do think by and large, he's been a, a quite good governor. There's you know some things you can always pick at in somebody's record. But by and large, I think he has been a good governor in the state of Florida, taking Kristi Noem's vision, but implementing it at a, a large scale of a larger scale state in Florida. He's taken a lot of the concepts I developed in Woke Inc. and tried to translate those into action in Florida as well. So I give him credit for being a good executor in the state of Florida. But when it comes to the country, you have to be able to set a vision that is independent, that is unapologetic about what we're running to as a nation. And it's not his fault. So this isn't a specific comment to DeSantis. I think it applies to any career professional politician. The mother's milk is the donor class. There's no doubt about it, right? The super PAC complex. Personally, I think super PACs are destructive for the American electoral process. And I think Republicans should embrace that message. Trump came in as an outsider in 2015, and I'm coming as the outsider now. I think our party will and should be the party that regularly puts the outsider in the White House. Somebody who's a product of that donor industrial complex is not going to be able to have the actual spine to cut the cord from China if that's what's going to be required, and I think it is, to actually shut down the administrative state which I think is actually gonna be required. And so, so I think that that's something that if you're dependent on the donor class, and you know, I don't wanna go into specific examples on DeSantis, I mean, we could if you want, but I think it applies to most professional career politicians. They're beholden to the people who fund them. And to me, I've lost many large donors because of the things I've said. And you know what it cost me? It's cost me already over $15 million of my hard earned money that I've already had to put into this campaign. But such is the price of independence such as the price of actual freedom to say what you want. That was Trump in 2015. That's me this time around. And I expect before very long, it will be down to me and Donald Trump in this race. And the question will be, who can take our America First agenda even further? And I say that as somebody who deeply respects what Donald Trump did for this country. And I think we need to celebrate those accomplishments while we then build on them and take it to the next level.